お願いやめさせてできるだけ心の闇を吐かせて受け止めるそして最低を下すそれが最低者なのです Hey guys, k u k u l i n here, and this is my review for Death Parade Episode 9. Okay, I'm going to get through the spoiler free bit of this very quickly because I have a lot to say that includes spoilers. So, should you watch this episode? Definitely. Should you watch the last episode and then this episode? Definitely. 100%. It makes you really question your own ethics, and that's awesome. And you find out so much about Shimada and Tatsumi in this episode. d e k u m grows so much as a character. Kurokami grows as a character. It's just amazing. Definitely watch this and, you know, spoiler flags from here on because I'm going to go straight into this again. So, Shimada, very nice guy. His parents died while he was young. He dropped out of high school to work endless amounts of jobs, working day and night to make sure he could pay for his sister's school fees. Very sweet guy. I loved the crap out of him. Yeah. His sister got brutally raped, which was horrible even after his parents died. And yeah, he just felt so bad he decided to kill someone. Horrible. Not a position anyone should ever have to be in.、Um, she thought there were two people who did it, and he decided he was going to kill both of them because she wanted them to die. And then we have Tatsubi. Seems like a nice enough guy. His, he was a detective for most of his life. His wife was murdered by somebody who got out of prison. He assumed he knew who it was and killed the guy he thought had killed her. We still don't know whether it was the actual guy, but we're just going to assume it is. It was. We still don't know if it was the actual guy, but we're just going to assume it was from here on out because, like, these two's t o r y is over, and as far as we know, he got the right guy. So, Tatsumi was actually the second guy while the sister was being raped who was just watching. The reason he was watching is because he's basically like Dexter from the Showtime show or Darkly Dreaming Dexter the novel. He is a detective, but he also uses his connections to find people who are evil and in his mind deserves to be killed, and then he goes out and kills them. The most important thing here is like the arbiters from Death Parade, Tatsumi wants to see the darkness in his victims' hearts before he kills them. So he'll watch everything happening, watch a woman getting raped or a man getting murdered to prove that his victim is evil. He'll just let that go down and then he'll kill them. So he's really after his kill. He isn't an ally of justice trying to save people. He just wants his kill and he wants to be able to kill people he feels deserve it. As soon as they had both fully remembered their memories, like Tatsumi was egging Shimada on, telling him, You can do it. You've got to go back and finish your revenge. And so at that point, I was actually finding Tatsumi kind of cool. <laughs> and then when he fully remembered everything and the serial killer he was, he just turned fully evil. He wanted Shimada to be just as dark as him and to basically continue on his path of killing those who deserve to be killed in his eyes. So Tatsumi basically said he liked the idea of being an arbiter. He liked the name Arbiter. He considered himself an arbiter while he was in life. And that didn't mess around with Dekum too much at that point. Dekum was still trying to push Tatsumi himself to show his darkness. Kurokami, the poor emotional bitch, was crying her eyes out, begging Shimada not to stab them and saying, Hey, you can be redeemed at this point. She even just spilled the beans straight out and said, There's no heaven or hell, but you have the chance of being re- reincarnated so you could see your sister again. And at that point, Shimada kind of started to think about it, and he liked the idea of being able to see his sister again and living again with her. But Tatsumi kept pushing Shimada's button, so eventually Tatsumi just snapped. And it was super emotional. Like the ending music started playing while this was going on. And the ending music just made it so perfect. Because, I mean, the final line of the song is I can't forgive this anymore. And as that was being said, like Shimada was stabbing through the pucks and causing Tatsumi to scream out in pain and basically feel the pain of about two deaths at the same time. It looked incredibly painful. And he kind of deserved it. Man, it was just so sad. I felt so bad for Shimada. Because, I mean, he just wanted to protect his sister. That's so human and so. I can empathize with that. And then, after the credits, he does this really sick, evil smile <laughs> and says, This time I'll protect you. <laughs> like, 
he went full evil as well. He was like going to kill people if that's what it took to protect his sister. He was, he lost it. So he really did at that point lose his chance to get into reincarnation. But maybe this is the point that all humans can go that far, can be that twisted and messed up. If they're given the right kind of circumstances. And maybe there is nobody who deserves reincarnation by that system. Or maybe you just have to understand that humans are that messed up. But all of them deserve a chance at another life. Like That's what reincarnation should be. A new chance. A different situation. And I don't know. It depends on how you look at the souls. Like are, can souls be corrupted from the beginning? Are we not born with innocence? Are our souls predetermining our future? Or do we start over every time we get reincarnated? And this is the kind of thing that I want this anime to go into and answer. At the end, Kurokami started punching Deckham. She was not happy at all. She told him he was just as bad as Tatsumi. And he really started to feel it at that point. Like he went silent and grabbed his heart. And he was feeling the emotion at that point. He was devastated to hear that Kurokami saw him that evil. So clearly emotion has started to get through to him. So Nona's plan is working here. <laughs> so overall, I'd give this episode an 8 out of 10. It was so emotional and we had so much development between Kurokami and Deckham and the two characters that were just in there just to be judged. They strongly developed and it was just so cool. The ending song playing while Shimada was punishing Tatsumi was just awesome okay so on to the preview for the next episode if you're interested in my speculation uh what we saw was an old woman coming to quindecum and she seems to be the only one coming to quindecum there's no second one but what we also see is a wrist that has been slit and healed over which would suggest someone is coming to quindecum through suicide but it doesn't look like the old woman's wrist it looks like a young wrist and it could possibly be Kurokami's in that she committed suicide and ended up there. It looks like Kurokami is finally going to be judged because she's playing a game of cards with the old woman. So maybe this is her game where they decide if she's getting reincarnated or sent to the void finally. Which is kind of sad because we're going to lose one of our main characters. And Deckham's obviously like properly liking her so it's a bit sad to see her going. If she does go, we'll see. And it may be a two-part episode that won't end until episode 11. And then we'd only have one episode left. So we'll see how it goes. It should be cool. Um, the episode's called Storyteller. And as we remember, the whole thing about Kurokami's past is the story that she was either read to as a child or read to her child. But it's looking like it was read to her as a child. Because because this episode is called Storyteller and Kurokami's being judged and there's an old woman. Perhaps the old woman is going to be Kurokami's mother that has just died. And Kurokami is going to be judged against her. The old woman's going to relive her memories and remember Kurokami. And then, you know, they'll be like, oh, hey, mom. Hey, daughter. Kurokami will remember her memories and it will be obvious whether she should go to reincarnation or the void. And same for the old woman. Hopefully they'll both go into reincarnation, but we'll see how the old woman is. How Kurokami's possible mother is. And Kurokami definitely deserves reincarnation from what we've seen of her so far, but we don't know what kind of life she led. Maybe when her memories are unlocked, we'll find out she was a bit of a... Who knows? She could have been anything in life. <laughs> we'll see what we'll find out. So yeah, thank you guys for watching. Leave a comment to let me know what you thought of the episode and what you think is going to happen in the next couple of episodes, because that's really cool too. Um, yeah. Like and subscribe if you haven't and I will see you next.